hello friends welcome back today we will be learning something very interesting that is how to implement gmail mail merge without using google app scripts yes you heard it correctly you will be implementing mail merge but without writing a single line of code so without wasting any time let's begin so we will go to a google sheet so this is my google sheet and it has uh, the names of the recipients and their respective email ids now our intention is to send customized emails to these recipients and since we would not be writing a single line of code this time you would be taking the help of this beautiful spreadsheet app which will enable us to send customized emails without any code so what you have to do is you have to go to leader.app on your browser then register for it using the sign up button once you have done that you could just sign in and you'd be landed on this kind of a page where you have this option to create a new file you'll see this kind of a spreadsheet file will come up now we want to send emails to the email ids which are present in our google sheet so this is our google sheet and we would be taking the help of Lido to send the customized emails for the email IDs present in the Google Sheet. So first step would be to connect this Lido sheet to the Google Sheet, which we can do it using this connect data button. I click on it, select Google Sheets here. For the first time, it will ask you to add your Google account. So just click on this button and add the Google account with, in which your Google Sheet is residing. I have already done that. So I am clicking on the select button. Here it is asking me for the URL of the Google Sheet. Now, this is my Google Sheet. I'll copy its URL, come back and paste it over here. Click Next. On the next screen, if you see on the top left-hand corner, here you'll see the list of tabs. So since in my Google Sheet, we had only one data tab, the option over here is just the data. But if I would have had multiple tabs, it would have shown the list of all the tabs and you have to select the tab in which you have your interest. So I will keep the data tab selected. Here we see the list of columns. So since we need, I need all the columns, I am keeping the select all checked. Else I could just deselect it and just select the column which I need. But I'll keep select all selected. And here you could see it is showing a preview of the data which is available in the Google Sheet. So I could just review it and then finally click on add data. Now the data is almost imported. You click on save and here you have the data. So if you see the for, for this data, which is coming from the Google sheet, it has created a new sheet over here. Name is sheet two, and it has the same data, which we had in our Google sheet. So Google sheet had three rows of data. Similarly, in this Lero sheet, we have the same three rows of data. Now comes the most interesting part. Our intention was mail merge to send customized emails to the recipient. For that, what we'll do, we'll go to sheet one, we'll rename it to email template. Here we'll define the template of the email. We will have two columns. First, the subject of the email and then the body of the email. Suppose we want to send customized welcome emails to our clients or potential clients. So in the subject line, we could just mention as welcome. And along with welcome, we want to append the name of the client. Now, if we weren't using Lido app and we were using Google app scripts, then you would have to actually write an app script to achieve the same. But with the help of Lido, this becomes very easy. If you come to this sheet here we have this column name which stores the name of our clients so in the email template if we want to reuse those names in column name what you have to do is you have to use square brackets like this i'll give a space square bracket and now it automatically suggests me which column i need to use so here in the welcome i need the name so i would just Click on it and by default, it provides this kind of a syntax, square brackets at the rate name. So this name is actually referring to this column which stores the name of our clients. So at this point, we have configured the subject. Let's configure the body of the email. If you want to send a welcome email, the body could be like this. Like here we are mentioning, hi, welcome to Dido app and we are excited to part, be part of your journey. 
so here if you want to include the name after high we, we could do the same thing space square bracket the suggestions are here select name and we have now configured the name column here as well so this is just an example where we have just configured one name column in the template if you had a bigger email body and there were multiple columns here you could have applied the same rules the same syntax and you could have customized the email body just by referring to the columns using this syntax like open and close square brackets at the rate and the name of the column so this is how you configure your templates so at this point the template is ready the subject is ready the body is ready now we need to apply this subject and body in the actual email so for that we'll go to this sheet 2 and here in column c we will use one special lido formula it is called string template is equal to string template and here we need to provide the cell reference for example i want to use the customized subject so my customized subject is available in the email template sheet here in cell a2 so i will provide a reference of cell a2 over here close the bracket and hit enter so at this point it is referring it is like suggesting me do you mean dollar a2 dollar which means do you want to lock the cell so this is very good suggestion and i would want to lock myself because if I would not lock my cell, then similar to Excel or Google Sheet formulas, the index of the formula will keep on changing like from A2, A3 and A4. I do not want that. I want it to be fixed. So I will say yes, update formula. And once I do that, automatically the same formula gets applied to the rest of the rows. So if you see, the column C here is nothing but my customized subject. When the name is John Smith, it is saying welcome John Smith. And similarly for the rest of the other two rows. Similarly, in column D, I would like to have my customized email body. So again, I will use the string template formula is equal to string template. And this time, my cell which I want to refer would be B2. So I select B2, close the bracket, hit enter. Again, I will do the update formula. And here you go. You could see the body of the email has now been customized. In each of these cells in column D, it is referring to the name which is available in column A. So as I said, without writing a single line of code, we are able to create customized email subjects and customized email bodies. We can rename these columns so that it makes more sense. This is subject. This is body. And now comes the most interesting part where we will be actually sending the emails. So in column E, I will use another Lido specific formula which is called send Gmail. And now you need to make a connection from which email ID do you want to send those emails. So you have to click on add credential, connect to Gmail, select the account from which you want to send your emails, click continue. And now it has been connected. And the first parameter here is the sender email ID, the email ID through which the email is going to be sent. The second parameter is the recipient email ID. We have the recipient email ID in column B. Here I will provide the reference to the cell which has this recipient email ID. Next, we have the subject. So after comma, we have the subject in column C. I provide a reference to it. And finally, uh, the body of the email. And the body of the email is column D. So I provide appropriate references and very important thing is like the next parameter, which is called the status. Like once the email goes out, it will update the status as success in 
the column which we mentioned over here so i am providing a reference over here of column f there are other parameters but for now for this example we we'll just restrict ourselves to these parameters i close the bracket and hit enter so with the help of this formula our emails are ready to be sent you can preview it for previewing just click on these three dots and here you get the option to preview it it gives you how the email will would be looking like when it is sent so this is a very beautiful feature you could just preview the body of the email similarly you can preview for other rows here it is you could see the client name john doe it is from row number three so our emails are now correctly configured are, and we are in a position to now start sending those emails to send the email either you can do it from the preview email there is an option to send or there is another option over here run action if i click on it the action is being performed and here you see success which means the email has been sent we can verify the same i go into my sent items and here you could see it is the welcome name of my client then the body again it has the name of the client and the body of the email so we are successfully able to send emails emails without writing any code you all must be wondering this was just one email what if i want to send all the emails together that is very much possible and it should also take care like this email was already sent to the client i do not want to send this email again to the same client so i'll just make a small change in this formula so it is, is equal to send mail before that i will insert one condition if the cell f2 not equal to success then go ahead and send the email so now if you see since the email for row number two was already sent this is set to false since this is set to false the email for this record will not be sent again and now i'll explain you how we can trigger all these emails to be sent automatically for that I will just rename this column to email trigger and now i click on these three dots which are at the column and i select this option run column on a schedule on this window we can schedule our automation so here we could set the properties you could see the column by default it has come as email trigger because because we opened this window from this email trigger column so whatever are the rules, whatever are the formulas within this email trigger column will get executed on a schedule which we would be setting. So here I will set it for our demo. The frequency as minutes, sorry, frequency as minutes. And here we have the options like after how many minutes the scheduler should run. So here I'm taking the option of every five minutes. And now I'm clicking on the save button over here. So the expectation is like after the five minutes have been elapsed, the formula will get executed and the emails will be sent. If you see in the bottom, the automation is running. I had paused the recording for a few minutes. The five minutes have passed and here you could see the status have been updated. The flag has been set to false, which means in the background, the emails were successfully sent. We can verify the same in the sent mails. You could see only these two emails were sent. The reason being, the email for this record the first record was already sent earlier so with the help of lido with the help of this amazing feature of scheduling without writing any single line of code we were able to send customized emails now once again i will click on this automations here we have the scheduler which we had created if i click on edit here it is telling me when is the next run schedule so it is it is like around three minutes after three minutes the next scheduler will get executed but if we see we do not have any rows over here so there won't be any emails sent so a question will be coming into your mind what will happen if a new entry is made into our google sheet so let's go back to our google sheet so this was our source sheet and assume like another entry is now available over i'm entering another row of data over here and how would my scheduler and how would my lido sheet react when when the scheduler executes for the next time so now in the background you see, if you see automation is running i had again paused the recording for a few minutes and scheduler is executing and if you see column f 
it is showing success and a new row of data row number five has been added and the email was sent to the new row of data so if you see i did not make any changes here in the Lido sheet i just added a new row of data in my google sheet and since this google sheet was synchronized with the Lido sheet in the earlier steps which i had explained the new row of data got automatically picked up and the email was sent you can again go back to the sent mail and here you could see the email was successfully sent this is the most beautiful feature of this Lido app irrespective whether you are logged in or logged out the scheduler would run automatically and it will do its job so it's just the google sheet where you'd be adding more data and you could just close this Lido sheet so whatever are the rules which you have set up on the Lido sheet will get executed as per your schedule you just have to maintain your google sheet and Lido will take care of the other things so this is the beauty of uh, this Lido app it could make your tasks of sending these kind of customized emails much easier and much efficient and you do not have to write any single line of code i hope you found this tutorial helpful if you like my videos i would request you to please subscribe to my channel so that you'll be updated with the latest videos i would be uploading guys thanks for joining i'll see you soon